Good evening, boys and girls. Good morning when you're watching this, probably, but it's evening when I'm doing this. Um, this is my first video Bible lesson that I have ever done. In fact, this is my first video uh, like this at all that I've ever done. I videoed other people, but not videoed myself. So bear with me and excuse me if I uh, mess up a little bit or look the wrong way. But um, the elders and Mark asked if I would do a lesson for you kids so that you could have a, a lesson uh, on Sunday morning just like the grown-ups do. And I was like, sure, I'll try. So um, we're going to look at the greatest treasure in the world. The greatest treasure. You see my treasure box back here, right? It's a little worse for the wear. It's been around for a while. But what do you think is the greatest treasure in the world? Hmm? Do you think it's money? Do you think it's gold? Silver? What do you think? The greatest treasure is God's Word. God's Word is our treasure. And David, the psalmist, even compared it to gold. I want to read you some verses that he wrote in Psalm 119 about God's Word. He said, Your word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. When we have God's Word in our hearts, then we know what it says. And when we're tempted to do something wrong, we can remember that verse. Another one is verse 16 in Psalm 119. I will delight myself in your word. I will not forget your laws. These are keys to having a successful, fulfilled life, a happy life. Your words are my delight and my counselors. We can use God's word for counsel, to be our counselors. That's from verse 24. Oh, how I love your word. I think about it all the day. Do you think about God's word during the day? I love your word. More than gold. Yes, more than fine gold. And then these two are very appropriate for what's going on right now in our world. Trouble and sadness may come to me, yet your laws are my delight. Or your commandments are my delight. And those who love your word have great peace. They will not stumble. Aren't those great verses about how God's word can be in us and keep us even during troubled times? Can you think of um, a couple characters in the Bible that we've studied recently um, from the little kids, preschoolers, all the way up through the grown-ups that we've studied since back in the fall who had some trouble in their lives. We're in some troubled times right now. Do you remember um, somebody? What does that remind you of? Who is that? Joseph, right? His brothers threw him in a pit. Then they decided to take him out. And instead of taking him home with them, they sold him as a slave. Can you imagine? That's trouble. And even after he was in Egypt, God was with him. God blessed him. 
and he was doing a great job keeping charge of Potiphar's household and then Potiphar's wife lied about him and he ended up in jail. In jail, he helped the butcher and the baker when they had their dreams and he asked them, please don't forget me, but they forgot about him. So he was in jail for quite a while without without um, getting helped and for no reason. He didn't do anything wrong. That's trouble, isn't it? And then finally one day, the cupbearer remembered, oh yeah, Pharaoh was having a dream that bothered him a lot about fat cows and the skinny cows. Remember that? And the cupbearer said, yeah, hey, I remember this guy in prison. He told me the meaning of my dream. Of course, Joseph gave all the glory to God and all the credit to God. And he said, God is the one who interprets dreams. I'm just the messenger. And he was faithful to God. And the trouble that the brothers thought they were bringing on Joseph ended up saving their family. There's two words that I really like in the Bible that are always encouraging to me. When you're reading and you see the words, but God, you know something good is coming. Joseph said to his brothers, he said, you intended it for evil, but God intended it for good to save my family and to save his descendants. And they grew great in Egypt. So God delivered Joseph. I want you to remember that word, deliverer. Can you say divine deliverer? Remember those two words, divine deliverer. Now there's another character that we studied. Oh wait, I went to the wrong page first, sorry. This is the page I wanted to go to first. See this young man? He's being taken from his home. Do you remember his name? Daniel, right? Daniel. And Daniel was taken from his home. He didn't do anything wrong, but he had to grow up in a foreign land. He had to learn a new language, learn all these new customs, but he was faithful to God. He trusted God in the middle of his troubles and God was with him. Remember he had friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And they also trusted God. And God delivered them from the fiery furnace. And God delivered Daniel when he was arrested because he prayed to God. God sent his angel and shut the lion's mouths. Do you remember the song? Daniel was a man of prayer. Daily prayed he three times, even when they cast him down in a den of lions. Even then, in the den, fear could not alarm him. God just shut the lions' mouths. So they would not harm him. God took care of Daniel. He delivered him. Right? He delivered him. God is in the business of delivering. Right now, we're in some hard times. We need to trust God. God delivered Joseph. God delivered Daniel. God delivered other times in the scriptures. He delivered the children of Israel through Moses um, when they were in slavery in Egypt. When the Pharaoh was a new Pharaoh, the other Pharaoh when Joseph was living died and there were another Pharaoh came along and it says he didn't know God. And he made them slaves. But God used that 
and used Moses to deliver them. God is in the, in the business of delivering. And the most important deliverer that God uh, worked in his life was through his son, Jesus. God delivered Jesus from the grave. And because of that, he can deliver us from our sins and from the penalties of sin. We would be guilty, but God delivered us because of what Jesus did for us. So he is our divine deliverer. Um, when I was teaching the third graders now, back when they were in kindergarten and first grade, we did a song about this because we were studying the names of God. And one of the names that we did was Divine Deliver. And this is a really easy song, but you can remember it. And maybe you can sing it when you start to get worried or uh, frightened or just unsure of what's going to happen. God is our deliverer, deliverer, deliverer. God is our deliverer, he sets us free. God is our deliverer, deliverer, deliverer. God is our deliverer, he sets us free. Even when things look scary, when things are different, messed up, uncertain, God is able to deliver us. He wants us to trust him. Yes, your schedules right now are very different than what they were two weeks ago, right? Your schools are closed. Your sports um, have been canceled. Restaurants are closed. Theaters are closed. The church building is closed. We are the church, so we're never closed, but we can't meet together. We can't uh, encourage each other in person and give each other hugs and, and uh, be together in the same place. But in our hearts, we can be together um, because we, we know God and we trust God. And God is not surprised by anything that happens in our world. This did not take him by surprise. It may be um, not in our timing. It may not be the way we want. It may not be when we want. But God will deliver us. So you don't need to worry. Because God is our deliverer. And... I want to show you a couple books that um, I would encourage you to uh, get a hold of if you can that um, I just think are really good Bible story books that if you don't have them in uh, your Bible story library, it would be a good idea. Um, the first one is called The Jesus Storybook Bible. And if you can see here the little print, it says every story whispers his name. Every story in the Bible, the whole Bible, the whole Bible is about, sorry, backwards. The whole Bible is about Jesus. And every story can be connected with him. I want to show you an example of that. I want to read you a little bit from this book, just the ending of one of the stories, the story about Joseph, and show you how it ties Jesus in, even in the story of Joseph. This is talking about when his brothers came back um, to... Um, get food and, and brought Benjamin back with them. Joseph didn't punish them. He rescued them. He brought God's special family to live safely with him in Egypt. One day, God would send another prince, a young prince whose heart would break. Just like Joseph, 
he would leave his home and his father. His brothers would hate him and want him dead. He would be sold for pieces of silver, just like Joseph, Jesus. He would be punished even though he had done nothing wrong. But God, up oh, there's those words, but God would use everything that happened to this young prince, even the bad things, to do something good, to forgive the sins of the world. That's one example. And then I want to read you an example from Moses. And how, like I said, each story ends with Jesus. So that very night, Moses and God's people fled out of Egypt and out of slavery. They were free at last. God's people would always remember this great Passover. But an even greater rescue was coming. Many years later, God was going to do it again. He was going to come down once more to rescue his people. But this time, God was going to set them free forever and ever. I just love this book, the Jesus Storybook Bible. And then another one that I just got recently, and Xander and I are using this in our morning devotional, Indescribable, 100 Devotions About God and Science. And the author of this is Louis Giglio. And Louis has some neat videos about um, the stars and um, some, uh, some other um, awesome things um, about our awesome God. Um, you could uh, YouTube him, Louis Giglio, and you could see the video about the stars because it's really neat. This book, uh, deals with four different areas, space, earth, animals, and people, okay? And so, I want to tell you about three creatures that our awesome God, our Deliverer, created that um, I learned something about this week, and I didn't even know about two of them, um, but the first one is the sloth. Now, the sloth I didn't know about. Um, the sloth is what, that's a word that we use for somebody that's lazy because the sloth can stay up in a tree for up to 16 days because it takes him 16 days to digest his food. So it only has to eat once every 16 days. And it said in this book that it comes down just once a week. And guess why? To poop. I thought that was kind of funny. Um, another thing that uh, this book told us about was a, a creature called a mantis shrimp. Okay, Google that and look at some of the pictures of mantis shrimp. They're beautiful. There's all different colors and varieties, but they have these big googly eyes that are kind of stick up above their heads. The mantis shrimp, okay? And then the third one is called the leafy sea dragon. This is a creature that lives under the water. Um, you'll have to Google these because these are beautiful too. God created them so they can camouflage themselves really, really easily so that they don't get eaten. Um, so they won't be prey for the larger fish and sea creatures. And the head of them looks like a seahorse, but then the body is all like leafy and beautiful. Sort of looks like coral so they can blend in. Our God is just so awesome. He, he makes wonderful, wonderful things and does wonderful things. So you can trust him because he's got this. He's got you. He holds you in the palm of his hand and he's going to take care of you. So did you know that the Bible says over 365 times in different ways in scripture do not fear. Do not be afraid. God knew that we were going to be people that were worrisome and fearful. Um, Philippians 4, 6 and 7. I'll leave you with this scripture 
to close our time together. It says, Do not be anxious or worried about anything, but in everything, with prayers and petitions, that just means asking God, with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God that passes all understanding will guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. So if you want to have peace, don't worry, pray. God bless you. I hope you have a great week. Obey your mom and dad. Try to be helpful. Look for ways that you might be able to help someone in your neighborhood or your next door if you don't live in a neighborhood. Um, especially the elderly, if you have any older people that live close to you. And uh, I hope we'll be together again soon. Have a great day. Bye.